Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to address the whole issue of getting the best watch at the most affordable prices. And so what I wanted to do, I wanted to sort of look at sort of the overall market and then point to very specific things that we might be able to do to get a really good watch and uh, and save a lot of money. Uh, the first thing I want to do is talk, take a look at I, I, I've heard people talk about the watch market. Well, you got an authorized dealer and you have a gray market and they're, they don't even mention the black market. Um, I That characterization is a little oversimplified. I, I think the gray market, uh, the whole concept of a gray market in, indicates somewhere between a black market and what, a white market? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't care for that too much. I think a more realistic view was looking at three markets, uh, the primary market, the secondary market, and then the fraudulent market. A primary market is where you have the, the watches go directly from the manufacturer either to an AD or a wholesaler and then to the customer. Now, more and more, that is becoming online. Uh, this thing that I have up there is uh, from uh, Omega. You can go to the Omega online shop and you can get your your Omega directly from them. There's no middleman, there's no nothing that comes right to you online. Now, there, the authorized dealers, I think, are important for certain reasons. Uh, one reason, of course, is that people, you know, they like to touch their watch and feel it and say, you know, is this really what they, you know, maybe try it on, see if it's right for them or not. But, <laughs> A lot of companies that are now out of business used to be what were called brick and mortar stores. A lot of bookstores now, everyone goes to Amazon for their books instead of going down to your local uh, Barnes and Noble or Tower Books or one of those places. It's the way it is. So I think that we're going to see more and more of the primary market. Now, whether or not they're going to take the savings from having direct online sales, like there's no overhead to pay for the uh, retailer. So we'll see. Okay, now the secondary market, uh, this to me is the most important market in that it has two kinds of watches that we can afford. Uh, one type of watch that we can afford is, I mean, good watches that we can afford are ones that didn't sell for whatever reason. This is some kind of overstock, real overstock. Um, companies like Joma Shop and Shopworn, they will buy these. Now, these are vital. These are not nothing gray about them. They're vital to the main watch makers because what are they going to do with their watches that don't sell, either uh, on the wholesale or in retail dealers? Well, if they don't have some place like this to go, what are they going to do? So the secondary market is very important. Uh, the unsold stock from dealers can be, because there's one place is, uh, called Shop Warn. They have these watches and they just never sell. Another one is a canceled models. You take, uh, for example, Patek Philippe. One of my favorite models was the um, Calatrava. No, uh, not the Calatrava, but the Gondolo. The Gondolo is no longer, they don't make them anymore. So where are they going to go? Uh, those are pretty popular, so they may find a home anyway. Um, now, then you have your pre-worn. Uh, pre-owned uh, companies like uh, the Watchbox. The Watchbox is an authorized dealer through Govberg Jewelers, which owns the Watchbox, and a little gets more interesting and more complicated. Then you have individuals, what I call individuals, uh, eBay, Chrono24, and some other places like that. I suppose you could also throw in auctions into that. All of these places are places where I have gotten great deals. 
Uh, auctions are a little trickier because once you get your bid, you got to pay 25% over that in your top auction houses. Some of the uh, some better deals are in your lesser ones. Now, fraudulent uh, watches are simply those that are unauthorized uh, replicas. They're stolen watches. They're in, they're fake copies of a popular brand. Uh, some of these can go at a pretty good price. Uh, there's this one I pictured there is a uh, Patek Philippe Calatrava, $1,269. Now, if anybody thinks that's real, all you got to do is look at the price. <laughs> As they say, if a, if a deal looks too good to be true, it probably is. Well, let's take a look at sort of a, to get a sense of what top watches look like, I thought, well, we'll take a bunch of watches from this year's winners of the Grand Prix. These aren't all of them, but they're some select ones. Um, for the men's category, uh, mechanical exceptions, men's complication, calendar and uh, astronomy watches, horological revelation, and chronograph. All but two of these are over 100,000 Swiss francs. Swiss franc is worth about a dollar ten right now. Uh, but the the best deal or the lowest price is the Hermes. Uh, the complication twenty six thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. That's that's a whole lot of money. <laughs> but these other ones are just sort of way out of sight. And so the question is is how do we get something with quality that is more affordable? Well, one way is we can look at the movement. We can really, we can go straight to the movement and look at the movement and say, hey, uh, that looks like a good watch because it has a good movement. How do we know it's a good movement? Because usually it's by a well-known uh, watchmaker. Uh, for example, on the far right there, I have uh, the Felix. This is by Harbring II. Uh, I happen to have one. This is by Richard Harbring, who is the, uh, he used to be, one of the uh, top guys at a IWC, and he and his wife uh, went to this little Austrian town and started making watches called Harbring II for Richard and Marie. Um, so that's that's uh, one place where you can get it. The uh, Roger de Bouy Simplicities. Now, these were made in the early parts of 2000. Later on, uh, after Roger de Bouy was gone, uh, they started making different kinds of ones, but they're still I mean, very good movements because the movements were designed by Roger uh, Dubuis originally. And one thing, this is uh, one I have, the Roger Dubuis Sympathy. It was between six and seven, maybe. I forgot what I paid for it. But one thing I found out, first of all, I had an RD-14, which is a Robert Dubuis 14. That's the name of the uh, caliber movement. And it had a Geneva seal. I mean, there are very few watches with Geneva seal anymore. Most of them go to Vacheron Content 10. Uh, there's, I think, one went to um, Chopard at one time, but most of them, uh, and I think just about all our Roger Dubuis watches have the uh, uh, Geneva seal. It's great. Okay, the uh, Parmigiani, uh, this is, has been, is another kind of watch that's sort of just unpopular. People don't like the looks of it for whatever reason. They are, they, they can really pass on some fantastic watches that way. Uh, by the way, here's the, um, this is the, the one I was talking about, the Roger Dubuis Sympathy. And on the back of that thing is where you have the, the Geneva seal. So anyway, so one thing you can do is you learn something about movements. And we're going to come back to this a little later. I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, another thing you can do is you can find watchmakers by really great watchmakers. Or watches by great watchmakers. Uh, Vincent Calabrese, Daniel Ross, Antoine Prezuzio. We talked about uh, Roger Dubuis, Paul Gerber. Now... Um, in the early part of the 21st century, around between 2000 and 2010, rough somewhere in that neighborhood, um, Daniel Roth had his own company uh, called Daniel Roth Watches. 
the company that was sort of backing him, they ran into some kind of financial problem, and so he was uh, had to go over. I think uh, Bulgari were the ones who eventually bought him. I have a couple of their watches. This one's called the Metropolitan uh, 24 Cities, something like that. This watch is really, I mean, it's a fantastic watch, and it's got a couple little pushers over here that will change the go from daylight savings time and then to uh, standard time. A lot of good watches, the prices, you can see the prices on it. Now, where do you find these good watchmakers? Well, I got all of these from what is called the uh, Society for Independent Watchmakers. Uh, it's in French and the initials are A-H-I-C. Best watchmakers in the world. A lot of their things are so expensive we could never afford them, but you can find things uh, that are affordable. This uh, down at the bottom, you can see that uh, Paul Gerber. Uh, now that is a uh, brand new from Passion. Uh, I think it's called Passion Jewelry in uh, California, where that's where they sell them. That's brand new for five thousand five hundred dollars, and you can see the three gold rotors on top of it. To me, his watches are very very interesting. The base is an ETA. Now, another route you can take is you can make your own or sort of work with other people who will help you make them. Now, Jean-Francois Mochon is one of the top watchmakers in the world. And one of the things that he did, he, he started a company called Crenode. And Crenode, he made all of, well, he has a base movement. And then he has a lot of complications and things that go on top of one of two base movements. One's hound wound, one's automatic. Now, uh, up at the top uh, where it says movement, you have the what's called the C-102 for Canard 102. Five-year warranty available in uh, 10 piece, from 10 pieces. Now, what that means, if you get 10 guys together uh, who want a watch by a <laughs> tip-top watchmaker... They can buy 10 of those, and then they have to get the cases and everything out to put them together. One way that can that can be done, there's a company called Develop Your Watch. Uh, Miguel uh, Bolea Moreno, great guy. I've talked to him before, and uh, he can, he can uh, help you do that. Now, the next one is Vachure uh, Manufacturer Fluier. They're basically, Vacher Manufacturer Fleurier is part of this vertical hierarchy that the Sandoz Family Foundation owns. At the very top, I suppose you got the top, is Parmigiani Fleurier, the watches. And then you have all of these things. You have one company that makes the cases, one that makes the movement, that's Vacher, another one that makes the hair springs, that's um, Capo. Kappa Alto, I believe, or Alto Kappa. The thing, just all everything they make is is really good, and their movements have been used uh, either in general or as bases. And these, all six of these watches, of course, to be in the Parmigiani Fluorier. In certain Audemars Piguets, this one is in a 37 and a 34 millimeter um, Royal Oak. Uh, on the end is an Hermes. Uh, Hermes had something very unusual this year. Uh, it won both the ladies' complication and, the, and one of the men's complication for exactly the same watch. One was blue and one was black. The ladies got the blue one, the men got the black one. And that little subdial moves around. It's just really an amazing watch. And it has as a base, it has the Vosher uh, uh, movement. Um, some time ago, a friend of mine, uh, I had asked him, he, he was getting some, and so I asked him to order one for me, and I have one. I haven't done anything with it, but it's got a little micro rotor, and, uh, you know, one of these days I'll get a case and some hands and better dial for it and everything. But you can, you know, for very little, you can make a watch set. A lot more of that Hermes, for example, twenty six thousand dollars. You know, making one would cost you a fortune. Richard Mille, his stuff is crazy expensive. They're over a hundred thousand. Um, Gerard Charles, they're less expensive. I, uh, 
think they start in the low 20s, 19,000 uh, Bradley Taylor. Now, this is not to convince you to go out and buy one of these watches, but rather to show that you get together a bunch of other guys and you could make one yourself. Vosher Manufacturer Fleurier, they have 39 different base models to choose from. 100% Swiss, uh, and if you if you get 25 or more of it, this one, for example, um, this one came from a lot of 25 or more. I, I told them, I said, could you, you know, since you're buying in that many, uh, why don't you get one extra one for me and I'll pay you for it. And that was how I ended up with this one. But this is a, I mean, you can get a really top notch movement. Now, probably <laughs> the most challenging way to do it is to start from scratch. Uh, we had done this with a company that became known as Larique. Uh, we started with one of the top uh, watchmakers in the world. Um, Jean-Marc Viderec in 2007 won the very first watchmaker of the year. Uh, his watches, if you look through all of the modules and plus the movements, his watches have won more prizes than almost every other uh, watch uh, company. Except there's no credit for it because they're inside of somebody else's watch. What we did was, was fairly unusual, and we started with a movement, and we worked with them, and the only way that they will work with you is that they created an original movement, unless uh, you have had one with them before, and they say, look, okay, we'll give you your old one, and we'll put a new watch on it. Th that can happen too, but the Aganor, so we ended up with a bespoke uh, movement called the AGH 6801. Uh, then we had to get a, a a designer to help us out. We got one of the best, uh, Matthew Avigri. We had to get a case maker. Again, we went for the best, uh, Booten, Lannan, and Kate. And they make them, of course, they make them for Booten, Lannan, but they also make them for other top watches. Uh, Metal Limb. Uh, we found Metal Limb because it was the uh, dial that was on the 37 millimeter uh, Philippe Dufour watch. Uh, Fiedler, Fiedler probably makes more hands of tip, tip top watches than we'll ever know. They're very discreet about that. I can tell you something though. Some time ago, I was reading my uh, Patek Philippe magazine, and um, there was well, I was I, had, I was looking at a French version of it, and they had a big story about uh, Fiedler hands and how good they were. I don't know why, <laughs> but they did. Um, we had a, uh, you had to get something for every little thing. The buckle uh, was one company called Boussley Uh They did a perfect job on our buckle. Uh, we had another uh, one for the, uh, for our, for our strap. I, I took this strap off and, and I put on an alligator strap. The reason that I didn't have Protecto do the alligator strap is that there's such a hassle going across borders with a gator strap these days. So what I had is uh, we had a uh, had one made uh, out of out of leather. The color matches exactly with the color on the hands. They did a great job. Our names on it. This is a, a good uh, set of of. Uh, straps to hang on to and you need to do any international travel they're not going to jack you up at the at the border we got this for about one tenth of what we'd pay for a watch this quality which none of us could afford <laughs> so anyway those are some tips that i think that might help you uh from some very simple ways to search for good watches the other ones they don't get much more complicated than this last one let me know what you think. Uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you'd like. And until next time, have happy holidays from Bill Sanders at Watch Art Society, the art and science of Watts Collection.